it's a good time to say good morning to Bishop Nathaniel. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hyper. So glad to hear you this week. All right, sir, and uh, I am glad to be back, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir, and you're sounding loud and clear now. All, All right. right, and how is New York City this morning, my friend? New York is good. The weather is fine and dandy, all places. Not as well as Jamaica, but it's... <laughs> all right, and you're going to be in Jamaica. Uh, well, you're one day closer to Jamaica. Yes, sir. All right, and um, I heard that there are big plans um, to host you here in uh, Sablamar. Oh, yes. <laughs> all right, sir. All right, this morning, Bishop, um, we're going to be looking at multiple wives this morning. Uh -oh. We're going to be looking at multiple wives uh, this morning, and... Um, uh, it's an African thing, I believe, and you can correct me. Um, well, men uh, like to have multiple uh, um, sex partners, wives, girlfriends, and so on and so forth. From a biblical perspective, um, is this uh, correct? We have seen great men in the Bible uh, having many wives right on the top of the list. Right on the top of the list will be uh, King Solomon. Yes, sir. Right, and we have uh, another man, what is his name, Lamesh, is it? Ah, uh, that's right. Right, so um, it, it, it is deeply rooted in um, past times, uh, according to the Bible. Why is it, why, why um, in this modern dispensation, it has been um, suppressed, so to speak, because we have some uh, denominations that continues to practice um, this? Well, we remember, most of us is throughout the Bible. However, in the New Testament, Christ did tell us to be satisfied with one until the kingdom of heaven. That is a mystery that the churches don't teach. Now, you have men today, especially in America, you have uh, uh, other, uh, I know there are other extremists, uh, are you, should I use that word extremist? <laughs> mm -hmm. You have like groups who teach and practice multiple wives who are in the bosom of poverty, which is strictly not biblical. Because when our forefathers had multiple wives, when we ruled in uh, in, a, in our own land, yes, wealthy. We the men who did so were wealthy. Today you will have a man working at McDonald's for five dollars and fifty cents an hour, and he wants three wives, two wives, three wives, four wives. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. This is just mysterious. So are, are you saying that if you can um, manage financially, you should have multiple wives? In captivity, no. <laughs> what I am saying, according to Scripture, is that right now, one, when, when Christ returns, we, he will allow us to have more than one. That is what I'm saying. And I can prove what I'm saying according to the Bible. So are you saying in the New Jerusalem... In the New Jerusalem, m men will be allowed to have more than one wife. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. That's what God is saying. <laughs> is that the same Jerusalem that John saw coming down out of heaven? That's right. According to Revelation, what, 21? Yes, that's right. 100% correct. 100%. Now, Christ gave us a hint of that. If, if, if I may... Let me read Matthew 19. This is what he says to the, uh, uh, the, the disciples. In Matthew 19, 28, it says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, and the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit these everlasting life. So, right there, Christ let the disciples know. He said, in the coming kingdom, you shall receive a hundredfold land, wife, land, father, mother, children. Did you hear that? I I'm listening, I'm listening. That's what he said. So we have to look. Now, you might ask yourself, 
what is Christ? This man or or so your but 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 it, it, but what it, what is the essence of what Christ was saying? The essence of saying you shall be rewarded in the coming kingdom. That is the essence of what he is saying. Be patient now. Whatever but, but, you move now, don't worry. You shall get a hundredfold in the kingdom. But, but a hundredfold, dear bishop, does not necessarily mean that you're going to get a um, hundred wives. Okay, let's read it. I am going to read. hundredfold is just a, 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 new, a number that simply means a certain amount. Right. You will get it in abundance. In abundance. You're right. Okay. So the abundance of blessings there does not necessarily mean means that you're going to get a hundred wives. It means you shall get wives in abundance. That's what it means. It, but is, isn't that isn't this that doctrine that you're putting forward now sounds um, similar to the extreme um, the, the, a certain group out there I don't want to call it extremist but uh, that's what it has been classified as um, group that they have a similar teaching. This is why. Listen to what I'm about to say. This is why Christ said now, right now, when you read the New Testament, I'm going to show you the scriptures. He said, "Have one, have one wife now." Right. To show you a prophecy about the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. It says, And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Mm -hmm. Let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful, glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely, for them that are escaped of Israel, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Now, as we read on, Mr. Hyper, the whole fourth chapter is heavy, but it's very short. But he lets you know he's talking about the coming kingdom. He's letting, Isaiah was letting Israel know not to worry, because we were catching hell on this. Uh, Syria was about to come. Babylon was about to come. So Isaiah was prophesying to the men of Israel what is going to happen in the coming kingdom. Mm -hmm. So again, Mr. Iber, so your listeners understand what I'm saying. That's for the kingdom. Right now, have one wife, according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. Have one. Now. So why can't we have it now? Since, uh, since we're going to have it in the suite by and by, why not have it in the suite now and now? Okay, let's read it. Let me go. Here we go. First Corinthians, watch this. Chapter 7, verse 2. I'll start here. It says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, which means sexual sin, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Yes. Now you ask this, so what, what is the difference? Why, why in the New Testament is it saying that? Remember, when we were in captivity, Mr. Hyper, there's a stark difference between captivity and the ruling under David, Solomon, Moses. When you read in the Old Testament when we had more than one wife, we were in rulership. We were not captive to America, captive to Britain, captive to Russia, or any nation. So that's why now, Mr. Hypo, we must have one. Now, here we go again. First Timothy 3 and 2. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality. You see that? Now watch this verse 12. Mm -hmm. That the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children in their own houses well. Mm -hmm. So throughout the New Testament, we were under Roman domination. Christ and the apostles said, have one, have one, have one. So that is what we're doing. This is what we teach now, Mr. Hyper. Have one. Yes. The same but um we're running around polygamous <laughs> no not at all not at all right but we shall be changed bishop in the twinkling of an eye according to the scriptures we shall be changed from mortal to immortality so th there will be a grave difference and the wise aspect is um a mortal aspect the immortal aspect um we shall uh, it, 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 there is a, a difference i guess we'll be more on the spiritual side than on the physical side 
So how this teaching that you're putting forward now um, can fit into the, immort the, the, um, the immortal state of, of, uh, of mankind? The immortal state of man of Israel, I'll say it that way. Is All right. We will still be a nation. We will still be marrying. We will still have children according to scripture, and I can prove that. All yes. right. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. In verse 20, I'll read down. It says, Thy son shall no more go down. Neither shall thy womb draw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting life, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Watch this. That people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So, how could a little one become a strong nation? How could a small one become a, 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 a thousand? That's talking about multiply in the king coming kingdom we shall multiply we shall have wives like it tells you in Zechariah many people for some reason think we won't be getting we won't have wives in the kingdom we will have wives we have to shake white supremacy it's a lie it has always been deceitful watch this Zechariah chapter 12 watch this verse 11 in that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadaramon in the valley of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn, watch this, every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Simeon apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. When you read Zechariah 12, Mr. Hyper, from verse Eight down is talking about the coming kingdom. Yes. You understand? We will right. have wives in the disciples. Mm -hmm. Have wives in the kingdom. We will not be running around as a sausage fed. <laughs> All right, but um, you've been quoting extensively from the Old Testament. Can you, um, which is the foundation of the Bible, of course, um, can you round that off for us with something from the New Testament? Oh, the New Testament, absolutely. Uh, Remember we just read in Matthew 9, right. 28, 29, where Christ said, uh, in regeneration you shall receive a hundredfold. I want your listeners to forget that because we will read that and bypass it, not understanding what he is saying. Mm -hmm. If I may, I'd like to read it again, now that we've read the Old Testament prophecies, now we have a better foundation of what the New Testament Christ is making reference of. Read it again. Matthew 19, 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit the last life. So he was letting us know in the kingdom we shall have abundance, Mr. Hyper, of whatever we've lost, whether it's children, lands, our mother, our father, our wife, you shall receive abundance in the coming kingdom. That is the reward, one of the many rewards you shall have, Mr. Hyper. You shall have slaves in the coming kingdom kingdom Mr. Hyper. Are you saying that slavery will be in the, in, uh, the coming in the new Jerusalem? That's right. These are the things like it says in Revelation chapter 2. Let me read it for you. I want all you listeners to read this reward. Revelation 2 25. But that which ye have already hope as till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. That means overcome your personal sins and keep Christ's works, which is the commandment. Him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. So Christ says you will have world dominion, Mr. Hyper. That's why in chapter 1, verse 5 of Revelation, he mm -hmm. said you shall be a nation of kings and priests. 
Okay? Yes. You understand that? Yeah, but but if, you are, if you are putting forward, Bishop, that slavery will be in the kingdom, um, wouldn't you be putting um, forward a doctrine that says God is partial and there's some a high level of partiality um, in God, the Creator? Not at all. It means God is a just God. It means He is the He is the ultimate justice. We have never learned, Mr. Hyper, what true justice is. You have people who have stolen you from your land and stolen your land. Yes. Never received justice this very day. Not one black man, not one black woman understands true justice until Christ returns. Then we will see what justice is all about. <laughs> But didn't, didn't the scriptures, um, based on that line, Bishop says, we are to love our neighbors as ourselves? So um, if, 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 the, if, the, if, if Jesus um, teaches that, that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves, and um, then you are saying that in the new kingdom that Jesus says that he has gone to prepare, um, which is in his father's mansion, uh, and you're saying that slavery is going to be there, isn't that some a bit contrary to what the scriptures are saying? Not at all. See, white supremacy has done a job on you and I and our people. The scripture you quoted, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Most Christians don't know where Christ got that from. I'm going to show you he got it from Leviticus chapter 19 in verse 17. As we read this, Mr. Hyper, Moses will explain who your neighbor is. Watch this. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not put sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. Your neighbor, Mr. Hyper, is the children of your people. You've never learned that. Christianity has never taught that. Christianity has taught the and twisted love your neighbor as yourself to the slaves. Now we've gotten beaten, destroyed, and they say, love us. Love us so we got our foot in your neck and gross. How go you have to love you? No, that is not what the Bible is saying. We have perverted the word of God, twisted the word of God. Now the truth is coming forth from the Israelites. But Moses there is saying that we, um, God's children, so God's children are his creation. Am I correct? You're wrong. God's children are the children of your people. That's who your neighbor is, Messiah, but that's what we just read. Your neighbor is the children of your people. Now, you just made a statement. You said the children of God's creation. Yes. This is the next thought, Mr. Hyper. White supremacy says, oh, God created everybody, so everybody is the children of God. Have you heard that? Yes. Now, let's, let me show you how foolish that is. In the book of Romans, Paul addressed that. Romans chapter 9 and verse 7. Watch this. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Meaning children of God, that's what he's talking about. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is. They which are the children of the flesh, which means the other nations, these are not the children of God. Let me read it again. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the promise came through Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Paul is letting you know, and you know, and all of us, the children of the promise are the Israelites. The children of the flesh are the other nations. Those are not the children of God. So Christianity must shut down and stop. Every church in America, every church in Jamaica, every church in the UK throughout the earth will be stopped and shut down, Mr. Hyper, by the word of God. They will be destroyed if they cannot repent, every one of them, because they put lie after lie, and they got us all confused and against each other. You understand? You have Christians who will side with their oppressor against Israel, against our own people. They hate their own black brother, their own black sister, but will love their oppressor. They'll suck the dirt from the oppressor's toes and curse you and curse me. Yes. The truth of God. I'm Let me ask you this. Yes, um, 
who created the heaven and the earth? Of course, the Lord of heaven and earth. All right. Who created human beings? Who created what? Human beings. Or who created man? Let me keep it Bible. Who created man? Who cre of course, the Lord created man. So all men were created by God. That's right. So men are God's creation. He created all men, yes. So, all right. So, if it is his creation, then all men belongs to God. Am I correct? He created all men. So, all men belongs to God, because it is his creation. But they're all not the children of God. I'll give you an example, Mr. Hyper. Now that we've read what the New Testament said, I'm going to show you what the Old Testament said in the book of Amos chapter 3. It says, here's the word that the Lord, 3 verse 1. Mm-hmm. That the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Yes. It's the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Watch this, here it comes. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Yes. Not a black man and black woman were made free, and all other nations were not. Yes. We were chosen by God, given God's laws, and our people rejected the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we were made slaves, the worst slavery of all the earth. So now we're waking up. We have to shake white supremacy, shake the lies, shake it from us. God said, of all the families, I know you. It's like you have a, sh a closet full of clothes, Mr. Iver. Yes. Out of your closet full of clothes and shoes, there must be a favorite item. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite outfit. God created all nations. He said, of all the nations, I have a favorite. This is the Israelites. This is my Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. He says, you are a chosen generation, a chosen priesthood. But let me read it. I'm not paraphrasing. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Yes. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. A royal priesthood. That's right. The Lord has chosen thee to be a special people unto him above all people upon the face of the earth. Notice it did not say equal to all people on the earth. It said above all people on the earth, Mr. Hyper. You know what the word above means? Yes. There's no equality. You are of them. All right. Under you. <laughs> okay, let me ask you something then. Yes, sir. Was Joseph placed above his brothers by his father? Joseph was favored with Jacob. Uh, 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 but did Joseph's father place him above his brothers? Yes, he did. All right. Good. Now, right. Yes, he did. Hey, watch this. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, I, I am coming back to a statement you made earlier. All right. Um, although Joseph was placed higher by his father over all of his brothers that does not necessarily mean that his father did not love the his uh, the other brothers the other children am i correct because they were the 12 tribes yes they were the israelites that's why all right so i'm getting back now to god's creation you 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 agree that god created man sorry did you see what you did you compared the 12 tribes of Israel, Joseph and his brothers, 11 brothers, that's the Israelites. Right. You're trying to compare them to heathen nations. You can't compare them to the heathen. No, no be, be, the heathen nations, they went astray from God. This is the point that I want to make. This is the point that I'm trying to ask you to clarify for me. So let me put it in another way, right? right. Uh, um, it, let's say you have two sons. One obey you, obey, obey your command. One break your command. Ah. Right. So the one that obeys your command, um, he would be a favorite in your eyes. It 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 does not necessarily means that you hate the other one, but that one would have to change to get the inheritance. Uh oh, we have lost Bishop there. Oh, we have lost Bishop there, it seems. We have lost him. We have lost him. Uh, we, we, have, we have lost Bishop there. We are, we are trying to 
um, make that connection with him uh, once again here on Vibes Radio. We are speaking about multiple wives and then we delve off a little on to get some clarification on what, uh, on what Bishop uh, was saying because he says that in the new Jerusalem, um, you know, there will be slavery. And um, slavery, uh, <laughs> I need some clarification on that. Uh, I am struggling, <laughs> so I need some clarification. So I'm posing some questions uh, to Bishop where that is concerned. And um, Bishop, uh, well, it seems as if we have him back with us. Um, uh, welcome back, Bishop. Okay, welcome back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And um, uh, we're happy that you're back. So, yes, um, you, you made mention, um, I'm trying to, uh, to uh, get some clarification from you, um, re God's creation, because you're saying um, the Israelites are the children of God, and the others, basically, they are outsiders, and they are not the children of God. Correct. Right. So I am saying the children of God, um, they obey God. Am I correct? Children of God. O obey God, keep his commandments, and so on. Uh -huh. Right. Those that are outside of God um, does not um, keep his laws and statutes. Am I correct? They don't teach them, they don't know them. All right. But that does not necessarily mean that they are not of God's creation. Am I correct? You're correct. They are. So then, if they fall in line and do what, uh, what is required of them, they will not get the inheritance. Am I correct? No. Explain for me. I'm going to explain. Remember, when you read Psalms, watch Psalms 147, 19 and 20, it says, He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has yes. not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. The nations were never given God's laws, Messiah. The laws was given to Moses on Mount Sinai to give to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The other nations, the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Hivites, Edomites, they were not given the laws. Okay, agree. He has done a great job in twisting scripture. Mm -hmm. And also twisting history. They, I bet you every Christian thinks the Edomites and the Hivites were given God's laws, but they will have no scriptural foundation to justify what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Emotion. It's not... Now, Mr. Hyper, here's another one. Yes. In 78 verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Mm -hmm. He has commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Mm -hmm. The law was established and given to Israel. Yes. Never to the Hivites or the Edomites or the Moabites or Israelites. Never to them. But, but... Okay, it, it was never given to them. Likewise, salvation was never given to them either. Correct. Right, but through the Jews, salvation came. Through Christ. Right, 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 right. right, right. Uh, that, that is correct. Through Christ, who is a Jew. Yes. Right. Uh, right, salvation came. Well, um, so are you saying that salvation will not be filtered down to the other nations? Um, uh, to the other nations, it just stopped with the Jews. That's what you're saying. That is what the Bible is saying. But now, here it is. People right now are asking, will the other nations be in the kingdom of God? Right. It will be there, Mr. Hyper. Yes. But now. But, but 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 hold on, Bishop. Before you quote the scripture, but if you're saying that they will be in the kingdom of God, that simply means they would have to accept a salvation and the salvation to the Jewish faith. We understand that. They would have to accept, they would have to accept the salvation. But what, watch this. The question is, in the kingdom, will they be made equal to God's chosen 12 tribes of Israel? The answer is no. They will not be equal like the Jehovah Witnesses teach. That's not true. I'm going to show you now. Here's a prophecy about the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. 
and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Yes. Christianity never teaches, Mr. Hyper. They don't want you to know that you will rule your oppressors. They want to keep that a secret from you and me and our children. We will rule our oppressors. We, we have strayed a bit from um, the, the, the topic, so but um, I'll just continue down this line because I still need some clarification. In the commandments, it is uh, it's stated that the strangers that are within your gates, so the strangers then would be um, those who are outside of um, the, the, the Jewish faith, for example. So you are, you, you're a stranger. You're a stranger. But even the commandments is extended to the strangers within my gate. So if I have somebody who is not of the Jewish uh, faith working with me, um, the commandment even encompasses them as well, especially the Sabbath commandment. This, remember what we just read about the, the strangers shall be joined unto us and they shall cleave to us, right? Right. What that means, Mr. Hyper, is that the strange nation, it shall cleave unto us according to the law of the stranger. You shall be our servants just as the law of the stranger dictates. You read Leviticus 25 and 45. I'm going to read it for your listeners. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy, and of their families that are with you, which that they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. Mm -hmm. So, we're going back to this law, Mr. Hyper. This is what Isaiah was talking about, the Lord. They will be our servants forever as they were meant to be. Mm -hmm. They were never meant to be ruling us, dominating us, destroying us as they have done so far. For 400 years, Mr. Hyper, aren't you sick of it yet? I, I agree with that, what you talk about, um, um, sick of the, um, you know, the punishment that my people face and all of that. But um, will, the, will the oppressor, um, which is um, the Caucasian-looking uh, people, um, will they be saved? Because based on the line that you're on, it seems as if you are saying that uh, they can't be saved. Mr. Hyper, let me ask you this. When you read the scriptures, God mentions all races of biblical names. Yes. What is the biblical name? I'm asking you now. What is the biblical name of the Caucasian race? Uh, the Edomites. Very good. All praises. Now, let's see the prophecy, Mr. Hyper. Watch what I'm about to read to you out of the Bible. You right. right. So, uh, but, but let me ask you one question before you jump to the scriptures. If an Edomite... Uh, does the the uh, the plan of salvation extend to the Edomites? Let's say they are within my gates with, with the stranger. Isn't the Edomite a stranger or the white man, as you um, as you'd say, the Caucasian man? <laughs> yes, but there is a specific judgment. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I understand. What, I, I know exactly where you're going. But I'm saying, no, this is what I want you to answer for me. I know exactly where you're going. I, I know exactly where you're going to take me to and tell me that they are cursed and all of that. But let's look at the, the scenario that I'm putting forward to you. Yes. He's a stranger. I'm going to explain it. All right. Remember Revelation 20, says that Christ shall rule the earth for a thousand years. In Revelation 20. Okay? You with me so far? Yes. For a thousand years, the nation of Israel will dominate the earth under Christ. All nations will be subject unto us. They will be chained, and the nations will be released from hard bondage. Now, each nation will have different judgments. Watch what it says about the Edomites in the book of Obadiah, verse 18. 
And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. Does that mean some of them are going to be saved, Mr. Hyper? Wait, none of them shall remain? <laughs> well, 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 you know, you have to study the Bible, Bishop. Um, precepts up and precepts, line up and line, here a little, there a little. You have just quoted one scripture, so we'd have to take it through, you know, precepts up and precepts. Lines up and line, here a little, here a little, and then we'll come to the conclusion. Okay. So now, watch this. Now, I've just read you a prophecy in the kingdom. Yes. It's not be any remaining. Watch what it says, what Paul says about Esau in Hebrews 12 and 16. It says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Mm -hmm. One more for me, so the birthright. For ye know, how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Paul reminded the Hebrews, he said Esau has no place of repentance, although he cried, although he humbled himself. There's no repentance for them. So that's what Paul reminded you and me of. That's why in Romans 9, 13, he, he says again, Jacob has God loved. But Esau has he hated. That's why. That's why Obadiah says this: the final judgment of them, there shall be none remaining of them. None, none. Their purpose is to do this evil that they're doing. After this, after the king coming kingdom, the time is up to fight. So, are you saying that no white man, no white woman, no white boy, no white girl can be saved or will be saved? None of them of that. Now, you might say, well, what if they're mixed? What if their father's black, but they look white? Well, that's different, Mr. Eiffel. We're not talking about that. No, no, no. no. I understand the mixed racial thing you're going to do. Because at least there'll be a line to Israel. That's a line you're, 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 you're going to take. But are you categorically saying, Bishop Nathaniel, that no white man, no white woman, no white boy, no white girl, will be saved. It doesn't matter how, how, um, how, um, the, how much commandments they keep, the statutes and the judgments of God. It's a waste of time. They cannot be saved. Is that what you're saying? According to the Bible, it's a waste of time. And that is 100% correct. Watch this, Ms. Iver. I did an interview some time ago with a young uh, Jewish man. Yes. And he says to me, he says, well, the Jewish people of today keep God's commandments. And there were many black people that said, yes, yes, yes. I said, really? I said, do you keep God's commandments? He says, yes, we keep Sabbat. We keep all this. I said, wait a minute. The law says, thou shalt not be a false witness against your neighbor. I said, doesn't the law that? The Jewish man says, yes. I said, according to scripture, Mr. Jewish man, are you a Jew? He was. He hesitates. Then he says, well, based on what you showed me, I would have to say, uh, I guess I'm Esau, Edom. I said, that's exactly who you are. You have never been, you have bad false witness from the beginning of time. You've lied. You've lied on all races, Mr. Jewish man. You have never kept God's commandments. You've deceived the nation. <laughs> they even, Mr. Hyper, they stole our motherland of Jerusalem and set themselves up like it says in Ezekiel 36. They would do. It says they would do that, Mr. Hyper. So are you saying that probation has been closed for the white man? There's no salvation for them. None. <laughs> Watch this, Mr. Hyper. Watch this. Ezekiel. These are hard stuff that you're putting forth, you know, Bishop. These are hard stuff that you're putting out there. Yeah, I know. Watch this. Watch this. Now, for all your listeners, the, the ancient name of Edom is called Idumia in the Bible. And later on, it's also called Idumia, which is Greek. Yes. Watch the prophecy in Ezekiel 36, 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is Edom, which, has appoint, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for prey. 
Mm -hmm. Prophet Sahaiba, the prophecy, Ezekiel said, I do deal would take our land. People over there today, Mr. Heifel, that's Idumia, that's Edom. They stole our land and set themselves up as us. Now you and I are Afro-American or Jamaican, Caribbean, African, and they're the Jews. No! This whole thing has been turned upside down. There's the greatest conspiracy at the propagated against our people. All right, guess what, my goodly bishop? We're out of time. The producer is telling me to giving me the rap signal. We'll pick it up next uh, Tuesday, bright and early. Set your clock, sir. Do remember that um, you are one hour ahead of me here in, here in Jamaica, sir. So um, it will be um, da -dum, da -dum, 11 or 05 your time. Yes, Mr. Hyper, can you let your listeners know? We revised our website at www.israelunite.org. Take a look at it. It's great. It's fantastic. Look at it. All right. Say that again uh, for us, please, Bishop, before you go. Uh, www.israelunite.org. Or you can call me at 718-303-9655. All right, sir. It's um, nice hearing from you today, sir. Um, somewhat controversial today. I'm stirring up the people here in uh, Jamaica. And I know that they are looking forward to seeing you here to ask you some of these questions face to face, sir. Yes, sir. I, I look forward to it. All praises to the most high. All right, sir. And we'll make sure that they don't stone you like Stephen. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> All the best, my friend. See you next Tuesday. All been well. All right. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.